muted. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's get started. We'll continue with the, the I/O package, uh, which we started in our previous session. Okay. So last session we completed input stream, file input stream, which is used to read uh, uh, bytes from an input file. So we start with the file output stream, so which is used to write bytes to an output. Uh, okay. So uh, sorry, I do not have uh, the pen as of now today. I uh, will try to see if I can uh, use it. Otherwise, without then we will uh, see. Okay. So there are uh, uh, five, uh, four constructors. File output stream. Uh, these are the constructors. String one. Uh, the first one will take a string as string uh, which points to a particular uh, file name. The second one takes a file object. Third one, it uh, string file name. I mean the directory path and it will give the, I mean the second parameter is boolean which says whether you want to append to a particular file or you want to overwrite it. If you do, if you say, if you say this as, a, I mean if you don't mention this, the file will be overwritten, okay. <coughs> Sorry. The file will be overwritten. So similarly, another, the last uh, constructor takes file object. Uh, the Boolean uh, parameter is uh, similar to what uh, uh, what is uh, it for the string argument. Okay. So Boolean, if you if you say uh, true, it will be in appending mode. Okay. Okay. Let us see an example, and uh, we will understand that. Here we have, uh, can you all see my screen? Okay, thanks. Uh, before starting these things, I just want to understand, uh, did you all uh, following what I am uh, Telling uh, about this I/O package because uh, after uh, uh, the sessions are done, right? Uh, for Core Java, I, I am planning to give one uh, small exercise, okay, which would require uh, you to implement uh, for implementing that particular exercise. You would need all the knowledge till we discuss, right? So that one. So if you if you face any issues, right, uh, or if you are finding it uh, difficult to understand, please let. You know, I'll try to, or you can send out an email with all your doubts. I'll try to uh, respond to the questions. Okay. So, okay. Thanks, Anantya. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. File output stream. Uh, so we'll discuss about file output stream with this particular example. So as per, as uh, we have, uh, I think we have discussed uh, the methods. Input stream methods and file output stream method. Yeah, we have discussed this. I think. Uh, I think uh, we have not discussed a particular example. Okay. So we have uh, different methods. One is for uh, closing, flushing, which finalizes the output state, uh, stream state. Okay. And then uh, since we are discussing about uh, byte, uh, write int byte, write byte buffer. We can then uh, whatever the data that is there in that buffer that will be returned to our destination, okay. And here also the third, third version of your write, it takes a buffer, uh, you can specify from where you have to, uh, from which point you have to, from which index you want to start writing and then you can specify the number of bytes to be read, write, written, okay. Okay. So in all these places, uh, you, you are seeing like, uh, we are writing or reading uh, an integer, right? So why do we write and read an integer? It is like uh, uh, whenever we read, it will be an integer representation of uh, whatever the byte or character we are reading, right? So uh, bytes or characters, whatever we are reading from the data, data is nothing but uh, we read from, from files or uh, some other places, right? So what exactly happens is all those things are uh, encoded, okay? 
basically all the characters are unicode characters ascii correct ascii characters are all are numeric values with some encoding attached to it okay that is why we call that uh, for ascii we will have some kind of encoding for uh, unicode we will have some kind of encoding but uh, basically underlying thing is like they are all numeric that is why uh, we use uh, while reading the we will get the uh, integer representation of uh, whatever the data that we are writing uh, reading okay or so be it your character or be it your uh, uh, byte okay so let us see an example okay so here we have uh, uh, and like if you can see uh, we have input file and we are writing whatever we are reading from uh, this particular program that is your file file output stream test.java test.ext file okay if you go to that particular folder uh okay man okay uh our question okay so here i i ran that program and uh, we are able to see the program here whatever the program we have uh, <coughs> whatever we have written to this particular file okay what i will do now is i will delete this file that is txt txt file okay and we will run this uh, particular program so what exactly we are trying to do here is we are using output stream okay file output stream to write whatever we want to read or wh whatever we want to write to a particular destination our destination is file output stream test dot txt that is going to write whatever we are reading so what exactly is happening here is we are trying to read this particular java file itself that is this file that is file output stream test dot okay that is why i am taking that as input stream input file okay so here this is not required at all okay uh, just in case if you want to test uh, uh, particular file attributes like we know how to kind of like uh, query a particular file like for different attributes whether it is readable whether it exists or something like that we can create an object of a file before passing it to input stream or output stream <coughs> excuse me okay so this is the input uh, file input stream which is pointing to your input which is nothing but your file output stream test.java that is we are reading the data from this particular file okay to file output stream test of txt itself okay so we need one input uh, stream for reading this dot java file and an output stream to write to a dot txt file okay so what are we doing here so what uh, what are we doing is like uh, so we have different kinds of uh, write right and different kinds of reads different versions of reads and different versions of write okay so here we read byte by byte it gives integer representation of whatever we are reading so for the end of file it will return minus 1 <coughs> excuse me so here uh, we have uh, uh, we are kind of like reading not kind we are reading we, we define a particular buffer of type byte and then uh, pass it as argument to read so what it does it uh, reads buffer it tries to read buffer dot length number of bytes from the input at a time okay and returns how many number of bytes are read okay so we will use this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, this format of read and write to uh, uh, for our file input and file output okay so if you see uh, this is another version this is another version so here we can specify like a buffer but from uh, from which index we have to uh, write the particular uh, to this particular buffer and number of bytes to be read okay this is reading into a buffer okay that is your uh, byte array so here we have different uh, versions of write you can write individual bytes or you can write uh, whatever is there in a particular buffer or byte array to a destination or you can specify byte array and uh, from where you have to start and the number of bytes here okay so that is the version i am using here so what i have what i am doing is <coughs> so here after 
uh, we have uh, everything set that is our input stream and output stream and uh, trying to print how many bytes are available to read okay that will give the number of bytes to be read from your input stream okay this is our input stream f i s f i s is our input stream f o s is our output stream okay uh, so i have declared one particular uh, byte buffer and the length is whatever the available bytes that are there in the input file you don't need to uh, discuss about this thing no need to worry about that okay so what i'm uh, doing is like i'm uh, declaring one uh, byte array and then i'm trying to read whatever uh, is uh, available in input stream okay so i am starting from index 0 and the number of bytes is your uh, whatever the available bytes okay that is what we have here okay byte is your buffer offset starting index of your uh, array and the number of bytes so here the starting index is 0 as you know uh, the index starts with 0 for arrays right so that is the one <coughs> And how many number of bytes do we need to read? We need to read all the bytes, whatever is available for, from this particular file. So after reading, we will see the number of uh, 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 input buffer length that will give the number of uh, bytes, right, which are available inside, inside that particular byte. In here also, you can give uh, num bytes read, okay, because it returns the number of bytes, right. Instead of this, we can use this one okay okay so after reading after uh, this is done whatever is there in this particular file right so we are reading this is as input file so whatever is there in this particular file that will be available in our uh, input buffer okay that is in this particular uh, array Okay, then what I'm what am I doing? I'm using one particular uh, version of input uh, array and writes it to a particular destination. Okay, so that is our this method. Okay, so if you want not not that method, this method. This is the method I'm using. So if you want to read a pa part of uh, your file, you can use this one. Okay, the, you can specify the offset from where you want to start and the number of bytes you want to read. You just try this particular uh, version of uh, write, okay? <coughs> okay, so after reading, we have to finalize the output stream state. So it is always uh, advised to uh, flush out the stream so that uh, nothing is stuck in your stream and uh, you get half of your data. Uh, return to your output stream, okay, this program, and uh, note that we don't have that file here. If the file is not there, it will be, the file will be created uh, by the output stream, and uh, you know, like, uh, we have one more uh, uh, constructor where you can specify whether you want it to write, uh, you want uh, the file to be appended or not, okay. In that way, you can specify true. If you specify the Boolean value, that will be, the file will be opened in append mode, and whatever you want to try, so right, that will be written uh, or appended to the existing file itself. Otherwise, the file will be overwritten. Okay. Now it returns a uh, integer, right? See here. Kavita, Kavita is asking whether it returns an a boolean, that is a read method, a available method. Okay, it returns an integer. Sorry. That is nothing but. Uh, how many number of bytes are available uh, in the particular input stream, okay? This, uh, how many number of bytes are available in this particular, uh, if you count the number of bytes here, right, it will be the same as the number of bytes uh, written by this available method, okay? Okay, yeah, so let us run this program. So number of bytes, available bytes is uh, 1209. 1209 and number of bytes read is 1209. That means whatever the bytes that are available in this particular file, they are uh, read and after reading, what are we doing? Okay, let us uh, put one more.
okay so let us run this again so data read and finalized so that is done uh, file is created okay so if you try to open this is a text document okay if you try to open it so you will see this particular file okay it is nothing but whatever we have in this uh, particular file <coughs> in this file whatever we have in this java file the same thing is there in your text file okay text file so if you want to append what we can do is uh, okay, we can do one more thing so as i always mention it is always better to close the streams okay whatever the stream that you open it may not be like idea to close here itself you can uh, i mean like uh, we have discussed in our uh, uh, try catch box right Ex uh, exception class you can use all those things okay and one more important thing to note here is i have not used any try catch blocks here okay for any of these uh, methods i have not used try catch blocks but when you try to write program it might uh, show some uh, uh, message saying like you have to catch the exception this particular method is throwing exception and you have to catch those exception and all okay just to show, these are all simple examples that is why i have just mentioned the, this thing as in a throws exception throws class okay throws exception that's why i have not used any of uh, the try catch block but it, uh, you, when you are trying to experiment with all these things use try catch block and understand that you like uh, it will make you uh, like understand if at all you get any uh, exception you just you can go through those exceptions to understand the what why you are getting those exceptions and all okay this is these are all simple uh, uh, whatever the examples that i have given these are all simple examples because of that uh, for demo only that is why i have not used strike as much in all this uh, exercise okay this example okay so now we have your foia file output stream and say for example i want this to this in append mode okay so whatever we have here whatever we have here we to this we will try to append the same thing okay so that uh, it will uh, show it will have uh, two times whatever the file is there okay whatever the file contains that will be shown twice okay file or put string and uh, we will will say true
I'm just uh, showing an example to you how to use append, okay? So now if we try to open that file, we should have, uh, yeah, so, so you can see here, okay? So it has uh, opened this particular file in append mode and appended the same contents, whatever we read before, in this way. Okay, now you can see this is one, the first whatever we have, we had written, okay? Then this is the second one in append, append mode, it has uh, appended the second time when, uh, when we read it, okay? So that is your uh, output stream. Uh, with uh, whatever we were uh, trying to do with file input stream and file output stream, what we try to do is like uh, we try to read one byte at a time, okay? So if you want to read uh, more than one byte at a time, you can go for what are known as uh, buffered byte stream, okay? So buffered byte stream is nothing but like it increases. Uh, why do you use buffered uh, byte stream? you attach a memory buffer to this input and output stream so that you can read more than one byte at a time which will improve your uh, performance, okay? So what are the classes that are available? We have buffered input stream and buffered output streams, okay? So here are the constructors. Buffered input stream is like, it will take one particular input stream. It could be like uh, whatever the input stream we discussed uh, so far, like file input stream or it could be any uh, input stream, byte array input stream or whatever it is. Okay, and it uh, uh, it attaches default size, default size the buffer to this uh, buffer input stream, or you can specify the buffer size as well. Okay, with the second uh, parameter in the second constructor. Okay, buffered output stream. Uh, we have uh, like uh, these are the two. For the first one, you can specify the output stream itself. Second, as uh, we have in uh, input stream. Uh, you can specify the buffer size as well, okay? So let's see, uh, uh, character streams are uh, next. So, so the methods are same, like we have input uh, abstract method, abstract classes, right? Input stream and output stream. So you can use the same method, but one difference is, <coughs> excuse me, buffer. But input stream supports uh, marking and resetting to a particular uh, uh, location, okay? So what am I trying to do in this? Uh, I, I created input stream and uh, buffered input stream, which is pointing to this R which is wrapped. This file input stream uh, is wrapped by this particular uh, buffered input stream, okay? So I'm just reading the same file, whatever the file that uh, we have, we are in right, right now, that is buffered input stream test.java, that is what I have specified here. Okay, so I'm reading from this and uh, number of bytes available. Okay, so I'm just reading the data, whatever the data that uh, is there in this particular file, I'm reading it and I'm checking whether, <coughs> whether uh, this particular BIS support, BIS supports a mark. Marking, so you, you can, Set a particular mark. Okay, say for example you are reading. Uh, say for example you are reading a string. Okay, and you want to set a mark at this particular point, so that you want to come or you want to uh, come uh, come and check wh what is. Uh, I mean, are we reading all the bytes properly? Or for some something or the other, uh, for some reasons, if you want to uh, if you want to come back to this particular point and check whether uh, everything is fine, okay? So you can set one particular mark at this particular point, read up to uh, number of bytes, okay? You can specify the number of bytes here. So if you, so here uh, we have a particular method called mark, and this particular mark will be like it sets at current location, whichever the uh, byte you are reading, 
at that point current byte that you are uh, reading that at that point it will set a marker and then you can it is that particular marker will be uh, valid until the until uh, whatever the number of bytes you specify here okay that means uh, before uh, using your mark and reset uh, method you have to check whether a particular string supports mark and reset okay so that is done using this particular method okay so what am i doing here so i'm uh, at the start before i start reading i set a marker at the beginning of this particular string okay that means here for example uh, we have uh, we are reading this particular i have set mark uh, mark x i have marked at this particular position okay first character first byte that i am reading okay for some reason if i want to come back to this or if i want to read it again whatever the data that i want to read right i can come back by using a method called reset to the same position where i have put my mark before okay and then read the same data again if it is needed so that is the case okay so what i'm trying to do here is i am setting the marker at the beginning of the string and that that is valid up to 30 bytes okay that is valid up to 30 bytes if you cross 30 bytes uh, this mark will not be valid after 30 bytes okay so i have created one buffer where i am reading the data as a byte buffer okay 30 bytes i am reading this uh, using the previously mentioned uh, read method i am using 30 bytes i am reading 30 bytes uh, this particular buffer that is 30 bytes okay after reading i am trying to print the available bytes uh, obviously you have read the 30 bytes so whatever the total number of bytes that are available minus 30 will be your available at, at uh, available bytes to be read at this particular point okay then i write using write bytes this is a method which i have created here so it just simply prints out the data on our console okay prints out the data on our console that's it okay so i am reading the writing the data to the console itself whatever the data that is there in our uh, 30 bytes i'm reading uh, writing it to the console okay once the 30 byte uh, length is 30 i'm resetting it it is just a simple example that's why i just uh, I did not give that much of thought just you can reset after uh, the length is 30 or the byte 30 bytes are read just reset back to okay so next what am i what am i doing so i'm trying to print the available bytes so it should show the actual number of bytes that are available because uh, we have set the marker at the beginning of the string and uh, once we reset it it should go back to the same location so the total number of available bytes at the beginning of uh, the uh, beginning of reading right the same number of uh, bytes should be uh, specified at this point okay so now what am i doing i just created one more uh, array so where i want to read 60 bytes okay from uh, uh, the first location okay so similarly after reading it i'm reading it here and 60 bytes are specified uh, and i'm trying to print the uh, same uh, array so whatever the array that uh, inside the byte array whatever i have read okay let us try to i'm not trying to write it to our output i'm just reading from a file which is our current java file and then printing it into console <coughs> excuse me uh, so excuse my throat i have some uh, issues with my throat so let us run this program okay so what it is saying like initially the, before we start reading it the total number of bytes available is 1599 okay so is mark supported by byte array uh, byte in uh, buffered input string yes it is uh, it is supported so we can use mark and reset method okay mark and reset method so after reading 30 bytes you can see uh, 1599 minus 30 is 1569 okay after reading 30 bytes how many number of bytes are available to be read 1569 bytes okay so bytes are read so we are printing that okay
Now I'm reading uh, 60 bytes. After reading the 60 bytes, these are the 60 bytes that are I'm trying to print. Screen. Are you all able to see my screen and confirm? Okay, so I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah, let me stop sharing and share again, okay? Uh, but I've shared my entire uh, desktop. Muted. Uh, can you all see my screen now? Yes, correct. I'm sharing the output now. Uh, okay. Okay. So now, what are you seeing now? Yeah, what are you seeing now? Uh, looks like uh, right now I'm not at uh, my place. Uh, so I'm, I'm out of uh, station, okay. So looks like uh, the network is not so good here. It gets uh, disconnected. So are you seeing the console still now itself? Now also? Are you not seeing uh, Shavanti? Are you not seeing the uh, code? Buffered input stream test that Java code. Now the program, okay. So okay, Shavanti. Yeah. Anyone else has, is facing any issues? Uh, the screen share. Please let me know. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what about audio? Is it uh, audible? Oh, thanks, Kata. Thanks for confirming. Okay. So let us run this program. So you understood what I, what, what I'm trying to uh, explain this, right? Uh, did you miss anything when I was explaining this particular program? Did anyone miss anything while I was explaining, explaining this particular program? Okay, let me go ahead and run this particular program. So you can see here, right? Uh, you are able to see my screen. Yeah, yeah, Kavita. So I'll repeat, Kavita is asking me to repeat this again. So hope you all can see this particular program. So as I mentioned before, I have put uh, uh, this particular portion that is your uh, throws class. That's why I'm not using uh, uh, play catch box anywhere in this particular program, okay? So what am I doing here? I'm trying to uh, read this particular file, whatever the Java file that is, okay? So just it is, if you want to use this particular file object, you can use it. It is just for showing the, like you can pass this uh, file object to your input, uh, input stream uh, as argument to the constructor, okay? So if you want to see that uh, I'm pointing to this particular file, so I have mentioned the file also, buffered input stream test.java, okay? So now our file input stream is uh, pointing to our buffered input stream test.java, whatever I'm showing here. The whatever the file that we are currently in, that is the Java file, which is reading. Okay, so what is, what is this particular uh, program is doing is, it is reading itself based on our uh, condition and then printing it onto the console. Okay, so with the byte input, file input stream, we were reading out that performance, we use the buffered input stream, uh, which takes, uh, the constructor will take uh, input stream, which are the input stream, it could be a file, uh, 
uh, input stream or it could be a better input stream or any other input stream. Okay. So here we are passing uh, file input stream as argument to the constructor. Okay. And then what are what are we doing here? Uh, please let me know if you are not able to see my screen. Okay. So what are we doing here? Uh, we have uh, uh, we are trying to print how many bytes are available for uh, to read from this particular uh, file. Okay. I'm not sure whether uh, yeah. Okay. So okay. Let's see. And then uh, uh, we are checking whether uh, mark and reset. Uh, facilities or uh, methods are supported by this byte input, uh, I mean buffered input stream. A buffered input stream, we have uh, the mark is supported. That means you can uh, set a particular marker for number of bytes to be uh, for which uh, the marker will be uh, valid till that number of bytes are read. For example, I have mentioned mark and 30 bytes. Okay. So, Say for example, you are halfway through reading your uh, particular file. Uh, you are uh, halfway reading uh, your uh, particular file and you want to put a marker at that particular point. Okay. And uh, you have put a marker uh, and you want uh, to read 30 bytes from that particular point where you have put a marker. It is like uh, you are reading a stream. Okay. So this is uh, your entire stream, you are here at this particular point. Okay. For some reason you want to put a marker here. Okay. And that marker should be valid up to the number of bytes that you specify here. Okay. Say for example, this should be valid up to this particular point. Okay. So if you cross this particular point, this marker will not be uh, valid. So after this, you will not be able to come back to this point. But before you reach this point, this marker will be valid. Okay. So valid in the sense. Uh, you can use one more method called reset. So what this reset does is, uh, say for example, you have not crossed this particular mark. Okay, that is the number of bytes. You are somewhere here and you want to come back to your uh, marker position, marked position, wherever you have marked your position before, okay, using your mark uh, method. So you can say like uh, reset and come back to this point and then read it again. Okay, so what am I doing here is, read this file that is uh, this java file but before reading anything I have put marker that is at the beginning of the stream itself I have put a marker okay and then I am reading I have just uh, I am just reading into inside this particular uh, uh, byte array okay I am reading into this byte array how many number of bytes I am uh, reading 30 number of bytes okay so I read this uh, read 30 number of bytes using this read method. Okay. And then I am after reading it, obviously the number of bytes available for reading will be the total number of bytes available minus 30 bytes. Okay. And then I am uh, printing that to console using this write bytes. Okay. Or you can uh, print bytes or something like that. Let me change it to print bytes. Print bytes. Okay, this is a static method. That's why I'm using uh, without anything. Okay, so uh, without any object reference. So what am I doing here? Uh, after reading 30 bytes, I have reset, and then I am trying to print the number of bytes available. So since I have put the marker at the beginning of this particular file, now the number of bytes available at this particular point will be the total number of bytes available for reading. Okay. So next, what I am doing is I'm trying to read 60 bytes from uh, the beginning of this particular stream. Okay, and then I am printing that byte and then closing all the uh, streams as usual. Okay, so let me run this program. So, are you all able to see the output now? Are you all able to see the output now? Okay, yeah, yeah, Shanti, thanks for confirming. Yeah, so initially the number of bytes available is uh, 1599. Okay, so you can see the size of this particular. Uh, uh, Java file that is uh, 2k, right? That is approximated. This uh, 1599 is approximated to 2k, or uh, 2k bytes, okay? And then uh, I am checking whether mark is supported or not. So it says true. That means mark and reset. We can use mark and reset methods. 
Okay. So what am I what am I doing after that? I'm reading 30 bytes. So now after reading 30 bytes, how many number of bytes are available for uh, reading? 1569, which is 1599 minus 30. So 1569 bytes are available now. Okay. Now what am I do, uh, doing? I'm just uh, trying to clear. This will be 30 bytes. Okay. If you consider each uh, character as one byte. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. 30 bytes we have read and we try to print that. Okay. Uh, this is after uh, printing that, what did I do? I just reset the, uh, reset back to the marker. So where I have put my mark pointer, right? Where I have put my mark pointer, I have reset it. So that the pointer will move to, so what exactly happens here is, so when you are reading, there will be a pointer, as in like there is a, there will be a pointer, okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, these are all the bytes which you are reading, okay, at the end you have minus 1, okay, so you are reading 1 byte, okay, so then uh, this uh, next, uh, when you are reading the next byte, the pointer will move here. Okay, third byte, the pointer will be moving here. Okay, as and when you start reading the byte, uh, the, the pointer will move from one byte to the next uh, available byte to be read, okay. So, uh, if you re read four bytes, the pointer will be at this point and the number of bytes will be, uh, whatever the uh, total number of bytes available minus the number of bytes you have read, okay. But what you can do is, like you can set a particular pointer at this uh, point wherever you want to put, okay. So there will be one particular pointer and the other pointer, don't get confused with this particular pointer, okay. We are reading the bytes one by one within the stream, okay. So there will be a pointer pointing to uh, the location where you have put your marker, okay, or uh, you can call it as a mark pointer and then that will be, you can specify the number of bytes for which this marker should be valid while uh, marking the pointer. Okay, so that you can come back to this particular pointer after reading so many number of bytes or before reading uh, the total number of bytes that you have specified. After you uh, cross that number of bytes you have specified, you cannot come back to the reset, uh, you cannot use reset. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it, uh, after reading so many number of bytes and if you cross the number of bytes uh, you specified while marking it, you cannot come back to the marked position. Okay. So that is what we mean by uh, it is valid. The first byte, if you read the first byte, it will not be valid. You cannot use the reset uh, method. <coughs> okay, next what am I doing? Uh, after reset, I am uh, trying to print the available number of bytes. So it should show up total number of bytes available. And then I am reading, uh, next time I am reading 60 bytes from starting. And then printing the same thing. Okay. So that is what is shown in our uh, output. Okay. So after reset, number of bytes available, this is equal to total number of bytes available. So whatever the 60 bytes that we read, this is the 60 bytes that we read and uh, this is being printed here. Okay. So bytes read 60 bytes. So if you count, this will be 60 bytes. Okay. And then program complete. Okay. So we use the buffered input stream for improving the performance. So he may not be able to see the performance uh, value of performance here, but when uh, you are reading uh, really huge uh, files, right, uh, you will definitely see a performance improvement when you use uh, buffered uh, input stream and buffered output stream when compared to file input stream and file output stream. Okay. So Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, uh, Shanti. Yeah. Did you try, uh, Shanti? <coughs> okay. This is an example for your uh, buffered output stream. Okay. So, what am I doing here? Uh, similar to what did I do with the file output stream, I am reading the same, writing it to one particular uh, 
txt file okay so you can go through this particular uh, example so i will not extend this i just run this program and uh, closing all the strings by thread and finalized output state so if we if we go to this particular uh, folder there should be let me go to that folder okay let us uh, remove this that is a txt document so run this program if you go here so now you'll be able to see this text document again if you open it you can see whatever we read okay so that is our uh, buffered file input stream and uh, buffered input stream file output stream and the buffered output stream uh, other stuff okay so we are done with this <coughs> so till now we were discussing about uh, the character I and mean, byte strings right so byte strings are uh, uh, at the top of uh, the class hierarchy you have input stream and output stream okay anything that starts with in, uh, anything that ends with input stream and output stream they are uh, for uh, reading your bytes okay so we have another uh, uh, hierarchy within your uh, uh, iowa package that is re for reading the character strings okay for reading character strings this is to handle unicode characters when you can handle any type of data with your uh, byte strings okay but again there will be some uh, additional things that uh, needs to be taken care uh while reading your unicode characters so give me a second unicode characters okay so to <coughs> avoid all those things you go for the character strings if you tell you are reading the unicode characters okay so, so this is a particular hierarchy that is character strings are uh, headed by two abstract classes that is reader and writer similar to our input stream and output stream okay so remember these two are abstract classes sorry uh, this is abstract i mentioned it as abstract so abstract class reader and writer reader is uh, obviously input stream so you can read you can use reader to read characters from a particular uh, input file input source okay and then the writer you can write characters to a particular output destination okay so it in, it implements uh, reader implements closable and reader so both are uh, uh, like uh, uh, as I always mention, it is intuitive. Closable means uh, the particular uh, reader is uh, closable, and the readable means uh, it, it can uh, it can read. Okay, so they some of the methods throw IO exception on error conditions, as we discussed with input strings and output strings. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So similarly, uh, writer has uh, uh, writer is also an abstract class for writing characters to output string for your destination. Okay. Uh, so you can connect like we just saw uh, buffered output stream and file uh, output stream right uh, similar to that one so you can write uh, characters there we used to use bytes here we are using characters okay we can write characters to output uh, uh, destination okay so it implements later implements closable flushable and appendable interfaces as we have seen uh, in uh, buffered output stream and uh, file output stream we, uh, we can pass a second argument which is a boolean and you say it is true when you pass true as a argument to a second boolean parameter uh, the particular file uh, will be opened in append mode okay so the methods that are de defined by reader and writer the, some of the methods throw io exception and error conditions as we discussed uh, for by streams okay so let us go to the uh, as we discussed reader and writer are the uh, abstract classes so most commonly used uh, concrete classes which provides which extends abstract class and then uh, provides uh, implementation for all abstract methods right uh, that is your concrete uh, class let us see okay here i have not mentioned any abstract class but uh, we have some abstract uh, classes here i mean methods here that is here close this is an abstract uh, one abstract method so anyone who <coughs> extend, excuse me, extends from this reader right uh, they should uh, implement this abstract uh, close method abstract method okay 
So file reader and file writer are two uh, concrete classes which extends from uh, reader and writer respectively. Uh, for reading characters, file reader. For writing uh, to a particular destination, uh, we use file writer. Okay. So these are the constructors similar to what we had for uh, input stream and output stream. These are commonly used constructors. Okay. There are the others also. So here we specify the boolean value to see whether uh, to make the particular output uh, in append mode. So destination in append mode. Okay. So similar to what we had uh, with our uh, byte uh, input stream output stream. <coughs> We have a similar hierarchy. Reader is uh, at the top. We have a reader which extends of, uh, uh, object class. Okay, so we have a, uh, buffered input stream similar to that one. We have buffered reader, line input uh, stream, line number reader, char array reader. We have the byte array uh, byte, array, byte array input stream similar to that one. Okay, so whatever we had, not uh, not all the classes, but uh, most of the classes we have. Uh, uh, similar classes for character input stream, character output stream as well. Okay. So, what are the methods available? Uh, we have close, mark, mark supported, read, all the methods which you see for bytes, right? The similar kinds of methods are available in your reader and writer. Okay. So, I am not going to explain these things again. So, we have already discussed those things with respect to byte strings. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So we have done uh, uh, file input stream, file output stream, buffered input stream, buffered output stream. Okay. You can uh, try with other types of uh, input streams, like we have a byte array input stream, uh, which takes. Uh, uh, to, okay. So to give a simple example, uh, what we can do is. We have a particular byte here. <coughs> like this one, you can try using it. Uh, I mean, uh, try with those examples, byte array, uh, output stream, all those things. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or any doubts regarding those streams, let me know. Uh, that is, I'm talking about the input stream and output stream, okay? For reader and writer also, almost all the things are same, okay? So, what? Let me take a simple example. Uh, I guess uh, you people can try with the uh, uh, reader and writer. Okay, try with reader. The same, similar in all these examples, right? You can convert this particular uh, uh, input stream, file input stream and output stream to a reader. Okay, file input stream and output stream to reader. And uh, whatever, if you want, uh, uh, to be stored in the change this bytes to character array and then they do the same thing. All the methods are same. So you can read and write into uh, read from and write into a particular destination. Try those things. If you have any issues or if you find it difficult, let me know. I will give you all the examples. Okay. Simple examples I will give you which you can follow. Okay. So let us proceed with the serialization. So serialization, I don't have any examples. We will try on the fly. Okay. So let me close all these things. So try, uh, uh, I would suggest all of you to try reader and writer uh, uh, classes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so for reading, as I mentioned, file reader, similar to what we had uh, like a buffered input stream, buffered output stream, we have buffered reader, buffered writer also. Okay, just refer to uh, some material, you will get uh, an idea how to use those things. Okay, and uh, if you face any uh, issues or if you have any, uh, if you need any clarification on any of these things, please uh, write an email to me intuition.javatraining at gmail.com. I will reply to your emails. Okay, so let us get started with serialization. So, <coughs> we know uh, a particular object will have uh, different uh, members, right? Uh, one is your uh, 
one is your uh, uh, instance variables and another is your uh, methods okay if may, it may have internal uh, interfaces it may have internal uh, sub, uh, method classes and all okay so so the state of a particular object is defined by its uh, instance variables okay the state of a particular object is defined by its internal uh, of an instance variables okay say for example you have a requirement where you need to say the state of an uh, object uh, to a, a byte string so we, here we deal only with the byte strings not with character strings okay <coughs> so that is important point to remember so uh, you have a particular object and you have a requirement to say the state of a particular object okay so what you have to do is you have to use uh, what is known as uh, serialization okay so what it does is it takes the object and then stores this particular state of the object on a particular persistent storage it could be your file or whatever it is okay uh, that this particular process is called as serialization that is saving the state of a particular object okay uh, saving the state of a particular object is called as serialization and retrieving back the state of uh, the object back to its original uh, position is called as deserialization for simple example let me show you uh, what does that mean okay so where exactly such kinds of uh, things are being used okay so if you are all able to see my screen so i have one application installed okay so uh, virtual box okay so what is virtual box uh, does it you can uh, save uh, uh, what this virtual box does is like uh, you can have a uh, multiple number of uh, uh, i think in one of the classes i have mentioned this so what it does is like it's like a, a vmware software so but vmware cost but uh, this is a free there okay from oracle so what it does is like you can install uh, multiple operating systems in uh, same nothing so these are your just operating system so whatever the operating system that you have i have right now right where, where my eclipse is running that is my windows 7 okay so all these things if you see all these things are excuse <coughs> me uh, linux uh, versions of your operating system so, okay so let me open on particular uh, uh, operating system so hope all of you are able to see my screen <coughs> okay <coughs> so this is <coughs> this is my uh, current state so what exactly i have opened here i have this uh, uh this particular uh, uh, this one what is that uh one particular terminal i have opened and i have opened on a browser okay so i have opened all the, all, the, all these things uh, in uh, in this particular operating system that is uh, centos 7 okay i'm reading all these things okay so i want to save the state of this uh, particular uh, uh, os just os what i will do is so i will just save i'll select this particular option okay save the state, save the machine state so this is actually a particular whatever you are seeing right those are all represented in terms of uh, object okay so whatever you are seeing on the screen whatever whatever the application that you write right be it simple application which you are uh, uh kind of like running as examples right there are also applications so whatever you are running now that is your uh, virtual machine right virtual box this particular operating system that is also a program okay that is running on top of your uh, windows 7 uh, uh, operating system okay so what i'm what am i doing now i'm just trying to whatever the program that is running that is in centos 7 right whatever i'm uh, running i'm just trying to save the state state of that particular machine if you see here if you can see this particular uh, option it says save the state machine save the uh, save the uh, machine state it is saying save the machine state okay when i say close it uh, shows like it is going to save the state so what is actually it is doing whatever the object that uh, it used to uh, bring up this whole application okay it it has saved it so if you see the property If you see the properties and all, right? It will it would have saved uh, in this particular location, VDI, okay, virtual disk. 
it would have saved uh, all these things to this particular CentOS 7 dot VDI file. Okay, that is your uh, permanent storage. So when I try to open this again, uh, after saving the state, you see that it retrieves. So once uh, before I try to save the state, that is called as serialization. Okay, now I am trying to read the read from the serialization. This is your <coughs> deserialized state of your objects, whatever the object that was uh, serialized, right? So uh, that was deserialized, and you got back whatever the state this particular object was uh, when it was created. Okay, so that is what is your serialization and the deserialization. That is your live example of your serialization and deserialization. And also this uh, particular concept, right? Serialization and deserialization will be used in uh, different, uh, 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 say for example, technologies or products or whatever you call it. Okay, for one of the example is your uh, RMA. Okay, this is your distributed. I think uh, in one of the session I mentioned this. RMA is nothing but your uh, remote method invocation. What it does is like, if you create an application with the RMA, uh, which is a distributed uh, uh, technology, distributed application technology. <coughs> so what, <coughs> what, excuse me. I'm really sorry, I have some uh, issues with my uh, <coughs> throat. So what is uh, done with this RMA is you can write applications which are uh, truly dis distributed. In the sense you can have uh, all your, this is also a client server uh, uh, technology. You can have your client uh, running in one particular server and uh, server in the sense, uh, say for example you have Unix server and uh, whatever other servers, okay. One particular server in, uh, one particular server dedicated for your client, one particular server dedicated for your uh, 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 Server components itself. <coughs> uh, I'm just taking up for server as well as the client component. So clients can talk to an object, Java object, in a different machine. Okay, that is what your distributed application as such. Okay, so uh, it need not be a different application. You can have a different uh, or two JVMs running in your system itself in one particular system. You can have two JVM and the client in one, client components in one JVM and the server components in another JVM. So clients can call, which are in uh, uh, one JVM, can call methods from uh, objects that are running in uh, the other uh, JVM. Okay. So that is what is your uh, distributed application. So RMI allows us to do that one. Okay. It is like uh, RMI allows you to write uh, clients in Java and servers in Java. Okay. Java clients and Java servers can talk to each other. Okay, there is another uh, technology called Corba, uh, which is uh, common object request uh, broker architecture. There, this is that particular technology is similar to Java, but uh, uh, what you can do with that Corba technology is you can write servers and uh, clients in different different languages. For example, uh, I have written server in C C++ uh, code, and uh, I if I want to write uh, uh, clients which are Java, I can do that. <coughs> okay. Uh, so here, what we do in uh, RMA, what uh, we do is we write a contract between client and uh, server uh, using Java interfaces. Okay. Uh, normal Java interface, whatever we we have specified, right? Those things uh, using those interfaces, Java interfaces, we write contracts which will be implemented by the server component. Uh, please let me know if it is uh, too much for all of you to listen. I just wanted to give a high level uh, view of what, what is RMI, Corba and all those things. Just a brief overview, okay. Uh, so you can write uh, uh, whatever the interface that is there, you can write, uh, implement that particular interface as server component and the same uh, method, uh, whatever you have mentioned in the interface, those methods uh, without the server implementation at your client side, you can call those things on this server component, which are running in totally different uh, JVM altogether. Okay. But in Corba, what you do is similar to interfaces, there is something called as IDL, interface definition language. Uh, you have to use 
issues that particular interface defaces like contracts between client and server in Corva. Okay, uh, so those are like RMI Corva are kind of you can say kind of uh, big world technologies now. The current technology for distributed applications is your web services. Okay, so SOAP web service then is, uh, is a perfect example of this distributed uh, technology that is RMI and uh, Corva. Okay, so in RMI, what you do, you write a contract using uh, between client and uh, uh, server using what is known as Java interfaces. Okay, but in uh, your Corva, you write contracts using what is known as IDL, uh, interface definition language. That itself is a separate language, uh, using which you can write uh, interfaces, Java interfaces like interfaces, uh, which can be used by uh, clients to. Uh, contact servers okay similarly in web services for example so okay so web service there are different two kinds of web services you might be aware of those things one is your restful and uh, other is your so web service okay in so web service you will have context defined in terms of your wisdom <coughs> excuse me in advanced java we will discuss about all these things wisdom and all okay wisdom is nothing but uh, the web day. Uh, web service uh, description language. Web service description language. Uh, and give me a second, please. Give me a second. Okay, so a uh, visual is a web service description, lang uh, description language. It's just an XML uh, language, uh, XML uh, file where it uh, specifies the contract between your uh, clients and your uh, server components. Okay, so interface, Java interface for your RMI, ideal for your core part, and uh, visual for your web services, core web services. Okay, so with that, uh, let us see the overview of the classes and interfaces that support serialization. Okay, the interface that we need to do or um, that we need to be aware of is the serializable interface. Serializable interface, okay. Uh, this serializable interface is uh, a marker interface. So, while discussing about uh, interfaces, uh, we mentioned like uh, marker interface is uh, one which will not have any members defined inside it. That is your abstract method, okay. It is just uh, an interface which is uh, kind of like uh, used for making a particular object a serializable okay say for example i have a one particular object uh, say uh, like uh, any object which you uh, define like uh, byte or input in test or java right so one particular object you want to serialize the state of that particular object so first thing what you have to do is that particular object has to implement serializable interface so if you want to save the state of that any object for that matter you have to implement the serializable interface okay which is part of your java.io package then only you'll be able to uh, uh, serialize a particular object whatever the object that you uh, define okay whatever the object that you come up with okay and uh, this is a, as I mentioned, this is a marker interface. Uh, so there are certain uh, things, okay. Uh, one is your static variables, instance variables and transient uh, variables, okay. Uh, if you mark a particular variable as transient or if you have any instance variable which is uh, static, you will not be able to uh, save the state of those two things, okay. Uh, I'll show you an example of it, okay. Uh, so these uh, any static variables and transient variables, instance variables I'm talking about. So they will not be able to, uh, we will not be able to save the state of those things with the serialization. Okay. So external, uh, so uh, when you implement a serializable interface or on any of the object, okay, for, uh, on any of the object, uh, I'll show you an example how you can implement it. So any of the object if you uh, implement a serializable interface, everything is taken care for you in the sense like uh, uh, there are two objects, object output and object input which we will discuss uh, uh, in, in few minutes. So 
serialization or deserialization is taken care by Java on your behalf. Okay, you just have to call respective methods for serializing and deserializing. Okay, these are all also similar to whatever we discussed in our input strings. So read, write, all those things, whatever we discussed, right? That is the greatest advantage of using your streams. Okay, uh, like you have particular setup for you, which you can use it for different streams, any any kind of streams. Okay. For reading titles, you have a separate set of uh, classes. For reading streams, you have, uh, I mean, uh, bytes, you have separate set of uh, things. But the underlying uh, usage is remains the same. Okay, read means you are reading. It can, it could be your byte, it could be any other data type, right? Similar to that one, uh, with object output and object input, you can do the same. Thing. Okay. So that is taken care by Java. That is serialization and deserialization is taken care by Java itself. But there may be situations where you want to control how the serialization process has to happen. For example, you want to compress the uh, uh, size of uh, the serialized state, whatever you want. You are trying to serialize. You want to compress it and encrypt it. All those things are there. Okay. So if you want to do, do those things while uh, doing serialization and deserialization, that you can do using what is known as an externalizable interface. Okay, so one particular example of that one is, uh, say for example, we have discussed about a virtual box, right? Internally, who knows? Internally, they might be using uh, those things because uh, compression and encryption and all, they might be using it. For example, your VM there also, they might be using it. I'm using the word might, okay? They might, they might be using it. Definitely, they will be using it. Because the uh, serialization aspect which is provided by Java is not so efficient when you try to serialize huge objects like uh, what I did for uh, CentOS using the uh, virtual box or for that matter VMware, okay? Or for that matter, one more example I will give you. Uh, I was discussing about Load Runner, right? That is a tool for uh, uh, performance testing, okay? So, I was kind of like going through the code for that uh, uh, load runner product itself. So there I found out how they uh, they used uh, this externalizable for uh, customizing the serialization and deserialization for their needs. Okay, that is how uh, that is done using ex uh, implementing this externalizable interface. Okay, that is on top of your serializable interface only. Okay, so. Those are the examples for your uh, serialization and deserialization and how you can customize serialization using externalizable. We will not discuss too much about uh, this customer, uh, externalizable, uh, but we will discuss about uh, how serialization is done in Java. Okay. So, read external and write external. So, you can pass object input stream and object output stream. To uh, control whatever the way you want to control serialization and deserialization. Okay. So, uh, in order to like uh, uh, read or in order to write or for serialization object, you should have what is known as your output ob uh, output object output. Okay. Uh, interface. You should use object output interface, and then uh, this is an uh, interface. You have a, a concrete class, object output string class, which extends uh, input uh, output stream and implements object output interface and the uh, data output interface for supporting serialization. Okay, similar to what we have seen for uh, output stream, the methods right, right uh, uh, with different versions, close all those things, right? Methods, whatever the methods we have seen, uh, the, the similar kind of methods are defined for the your uh, uh, object output and uh, for reading for deserialization we have a particular interface called object input okay so object input similar to input stream uh, the methods are defined uh, for your object input so what it actually does is uh, you extend data input interface and provide several, several uh, deserialization methods uh, using which you can deserialize a serialized object Okay, you can deserialize a serialized object. The corresponding uh, concrete classes are 
object output stream and object input stream. So if you see output stream extends output stream which is uh, we discussed for our uh, reading bytes okay and it implements object output interface okay. So here object input stream extends input stream and implements object input stream the object input interface okay. So we can see what are the available methods with this particular <coughs> Here I have opened all those things. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to see this. Are you able to see my screen? Is it uh, visible to all of you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, so we have. Let's open uh, object. Okay. Let me open it here. Object output. Object input. Okay. Here is our uh, object input. Uh, object input is uh, input. We know. Uh, we can. Uh, we use input streams for reading data from a particular source. So what is the source that we are discussing here? Uh, the serialized uh, uh, object, wherever you are serializing, okay, that one. And then the object output is for serializing into a destination, whatever the state that you want to serialize. Uh, what defines this method? If you see, uh, if you kind of like uh, compare it with the uh, output stream, these are all same methods, right? Because if you see here, it extends input stream, object input stream, output stream, object input stream. So, so, so it is saying like, oh, okay, I'm wrong. Okay. So implement the object input stream. Sorry. Excuse me for, uh, for a couple of minutes, okay? So we have, here we have uh, this object uh, output. Uh, the concrete implementation is object output stream, which is a class. Okay, the method the uh, object output is close, which closes the stream, flush as we have it, and the byte. So similar methods, whatever uh, you have. But there is one more uh, method where you can directly ser uh, serialize a particular object. So it takes an object uh, as parameter. So you can create a particular object and uh, uh, which has a particular state and then pass that object to write to ask it, pass that object to serialize it. Okay. This is a particular method, write object, which writes the state to a particular uh, persistent store wherever you want to store it. Okay. Similarly, if you want to read, we have available number of bytes read. Okay. It reads a byte from byte array. So whatever you want. So what are sub array, sub array if you can call it. Right. And if you want to skip something, you can skip it. Okay. So let us see a simple example of uh, serialization and deserialization. What I will do is I will uh, create one particular class. Okay. So what I will do is I write okay. Okay. So these two form uh, uh, your uh, your object state. Okay, so I am not uh, defining any methods here uh, because uh, I mean that, that doesn't matter actually. If you have any method, that doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so let me have one more uh, class. Uh, 
uh, if you want to pass uh, the values here you can do that way okay So whatever the state that I want to pass, I will pass it to the constructor and I will save the particular state. Okay. I will save that state. So what I will do here. So I have to pass two parameters. One is I will pass 10. Uh, looks like 10 is my favorite number. So whenever you see I use 10 as a reference. So now I will define uh, so what was the constructor? What do we need to pass anything to object output string? Object out position. What do we need to add a class put field so you can create object of constructor and and we have I have to pass an output stream. Okay. So so you can create a file output stream and pass it as a parameter to output stream object okay so uh, file output stream so that is where uh, you want it right so let us create stream fos is equal to new file output stream okay let us uh, and fos and what we do is okay so I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, serialize the state in a file called serialized. Okay, in a file called serialized. That is what I am passing to here. Okay. So now, why is this giving? Uh, it is asking me to. Uh, it is saying that unhandled exception type file not found exception. Okay, it will throw file not found exception. So that is why I always mention exception here so that I won't get that error. Okay. So now I have passed uh, object output stream. So I have passed that to object output stream. So what I what I can do now is OOS dot write object. Okay. So which object do I want to write? Simple object. Okay. So I will pass this object. Sorry. Give me a second.
so what i'm trying to do now is like i'm trying to uh, serialize this particular object state of uh, s state of s and then i will close okay close this <coughs> Okay, so now what I will do is I will read it from uh, serialize this state and then I will display what are the values that are available, the state of that particular object. Okay. Uh, okay. So what we need here is we need I'm making one particular mistake purposely. I want uh, one of you to identify that mistake and tell me what was the what is the mistake okay i'm making one mistake purposely okay so i want one of you to identify let's see who will identify and uh, tell me so our question is closed now what we will do is now we can do I'll in first string. Is the same. Okay, we can use the same one, right? We can read it from this same thing. Okay, and then So he is telling we have to override uh, a two string method when deserializing. Okay, let us see whether that is uh, the valid one. Uh, you know. Okay, let us see whether that is uh, the valid one. Uh, yeah, maybe that is needed. <coughs> while deserializing, okay. So he is telling uh, while deserializing we need to uh override a two string method okay let us see okay so we have uh, input stream now connected to uh, our serialized object or serialized file uh, let me this is our file okay and then equal to so what does this uh, return uh, read object so what does the return read object right we have several other methods but let us see what does read object return it returns an object okay it returns an object so we have to cast it to simple object okay so ois dot Read object. So we are reading from this particular object. We have converted it. Okay. Now what I want to do here is value of i. Remember, this is altogether a totally different object. Okay. This one is this one is totally different object, and this one is totally different object. So the state we have saved the state of so and we are trying to deserialize the state in second object okay so second object dot get i okay get value that here okay okay so now uh, let me close this.
close it. Okay, so I closed it. So let me run this program and see whether the state is state is saved or not. Okay, I I know the result. What exactly happened? I want one of it to identify. Okay. Okay. So can you uh, tell me why we got this uh, exception? Can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen? If you read the exception, uh, you'll be easily able to identify what exactly is the uh, issue. Just think and tell me what exactly. Yes. Excellent uh, here. Excellent. Yeah. He is telling you need to implement serializable. That is the basic requirement for serializing and deserializing any object. Okay. That you try to do. Okay. So implement. Great, yes, yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. So now let us try to do that. Okay. So if you go to that folder, right, it created one file called serialized. Okay. So if you see this, it will be like this. Okay, so you will not be able to like, uh, if you try to understand this, you won't be able to make out anything. Okay, so if you want to understand all these things, uh, read one particular book. Uh, I, I forgot the name of that particular book. It is, uh, uh, I'll let you know in the next session, okay. To so understand all those things, you have to read that book. Hmm. So this is the file which got created. In the output, right? The object is deserialized. Okay, let me put this. Okay. And also, we will try to print the object reference itself. Okay, so that we will identify. Sorry. Okay. So now let me try to uh, change the values. Okay. So let me run it. Unresolved compilation cannot resolve a variable. O is to a variable. Why? Sorry. Yeah, correct here. Thanks. Okay, now it is done. Okay. So SO is this particular object. Okay, so see that uh, this is hex of your hash code, right? We have seen how to generate these uh, values. Okay, so these two are different. Okay, so initially what did we do? We serialize the simple object and we deserialize the object. Trying to print the values, what are the values of i and the string, right? So you are able to do that. So same values whatever we have provided here uh, to while creating the object, SO object, simple object object. The same values you are able to retrieve it after reading the object. Okay, after reading the object, it gives object, so we have to cast it to simple object. Okay, so then we can get the uh, get and the uh, set, and then uh, you can use uh, set setters are also there, setter methods are also there, so you can use those things to set the value. Uh, if you want, okay, I have created this. Let me change the value. So dot set int of 30, 30, and then so dot set str of test string, okay? So now if I run it, you should be able to see those things, okay? So I told one more thing, right? So you cannot say the state of static and transient variables, okay? So let us try. 
private okay let me make this as uh, uh, don't make it as private i will keep it as uh, uh, default amount only okay in uh, uh, transient j is equal to 20 transient int okay so i don't want to kind of like uh, pass it from uh, the constructor let the constructor be like that only static int k is equal to 40 okay so now uh, let us create uh, getters for this thing source uh, generate both we want only select getters okay so i have only getters get j and get k okay so let me try to send the values of i and uh, j and k I'm not passing it through constructor i just uh, mentioned those values in the I just uh, initialize the value there and there itself okay get j get k okay why what did just happen Yeah, you will not be able to save the state. So that is why uh, the in console, right? Uh, okay. So here is the output. Okay, the value of uh, j is 0 because it is your the value itself will not be able to save it for transient. Okay. It is class level. That is why it is, you will be able to uh, see the value but uh, i was not expecting this one i thought uh, that will also be uh, give me a second okay Let's see. so uh, the obviously the value of uh, j will not be say because that is transient so obviously like it is uh, since it is a uh, instance variable it will be initialized with uh, the default value that is zero okay when i try to print it so obviously this is zero j is zero because we have not we were not able to save the value of uh, j but k i was not i was expecting like i will not be able to save it but uh, it is the display i'm not sure i'll get back to you on this one okay okay so the, i think that is uh, the and the, yeah he is telling uh, you have anything re related to static hue do you have any info regarding static why we were able to display that value so i'll get back to you on this one okay that is fine so i think i'm done with the today uh, uh, this session this particular session so if you have any questions you can discuss about it uh, okay no worries yeah i'll get back to you on this uh, in uh, today evening session okay eight o'clock uh, i was not expecting i was thinking like uh, we'll get a similar value as uh, j only but we were able to say it. the only thing which i could think of is like it is a class-wide variable right uh, so uh, let us open and see that uh, file okay what exactly happened uh string this, this string is there so here you are not able to see anything right uh see here the whatever the string that we have passed right you are able to see here that is a type string okay and uh mkq something is there integer i is there and uh string okay but uh, i am not able to see static uh, variable here but i'm not sure how it uh, displayed that value not sure need to check i'll check and get back to you on this okay so if you have any other uh, queries please let me know we'll discuss uh, about that and otherwise we can uh, uh of this uh, session and uh, we'll meet at uh, eight o'clock or eight thirty okay if at all any change is there uh, with respect to session timing i will let you know otherwise we'll start exactly at eight o'clock okay please let me know if you have any questions otherwise uh, we can wind up this session
Okay. Yeah. Thanks. You. Uh, thanks, Arun. Uh, I assume uh, no one has any questions. Uh, but even if you have any questions, please. Shoot an email to intuition dot Java training at gmail dot com. Okay. So you can just reply back to whatever the mail that I sent uh, with respect to the timing schedule. I mean session uh, schedule time change. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot for attending this session. Uh, so we'll uh, uh, start collections in uh, today's today evening session, and we will try to cover it as soon as possible. Uh, we'll take up some basic classes and uh, discuss those things, and then uh, we will close that, and then we will finally uh, finish up uh, threads. Okay. And with that, we will cover uh, most of the topics in Core Java. If you want, I can take up one more session for uh, uh, Java networking. If all of you want, otherwise we will not go for that. Okay? Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your day. Bye bye.